Okay, our next speaker is Bill Vandemore, and he's going to be talking about collecting $5 Federal Reserve notes. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'm going to start out. Uh, it never hurts to have the right, right book, and we've heard, uh, you know, buy the book before the note. This is one, it's out of print now. It's by uh, John Schwartz and Scott Lindquist. I think John has a few old copies at his table, but this really gives you perspective on uh, rarity. Uh, prices are up and down, but most of these catalogs, they'll give you the information you need and you check on current prices. Uh, that covers uh, things up to about 2006, and they went out of print. This is an excellent book by uh, Robert Aspizazu down in Florida, and he covers what he calls the uh, modern FRNs from 1963 to present. And uh, he's got more information perhaps than you want to know, but it's all here if you want to look for it. And as a, as a book collector, I found lots of valuable information in this 1977 issue by Chuck O'Donnell. And uh, it was the ancestor of this book, which uh, got a little bit updated. But uh, Chuck includes, among other things, uh, news releases from the uh, BEP saying this is what we're doing. We're changing this, we're changing that. And it's really very, very, very interesting uh, uh, things to take uh, into consideration. Uh, <coughs> so uh, it's actually three books because I realized that, that that other book was really, really worthwhile. Something else I'd like to share with you is uh, the Newman Portal. Those of you that might not be familiar with it, uh, Eric Newman left about a million dollars to uh, a group at St. Louis, at the University of Washington, St. Louis. And uh, you go on that portal, and you can just put Newman Portal up and probably find it. But he's got uh, all kinds of periodicals. One thing that it really impressed me, he's got a complete set of the Heath counterfeit detectors. So if you want to look at one, you just hit, hit that uh, particular one and start turning pages, and you can, you can look at the whole thing. It's really a, a fascinating, uh, fascinating portal. And uh, our, uh, our club, the, the, the Paper Money Collectors of Michigan, we sent our stuff in to be digitized. And uh, a few months later, Eric died. I got in the mail a check for $5,000 for us to continue spreading the word on collecting paper money. It was really, uh, and our fractional currency collectors group got a, got a checks. He, he dispersed checks to probably a, around 100 different clubs so they could carry the torch of learning forward, which was really, uh, really delightful. I, I was really impressed with that. Another one, if you're, if you're interested, especially in the modern uh, Fe Federal Reserve notes, is uh, if you look, look at paper money serial, dot serial numbers, and you'll get a website that shows you in pink and green the, uh, federal, uh, the uh, Fort Worth and the Washington printings by month what serial numbers were printed by series. I think from current series he goes back to about 77 or so. So if you want to get a jump on things and you check that out on the new issues and you see that uh, maybe there's a real small issue of star notes, uh, 6,400,000 is probably a one that's down the road is going to be worth hanging on to. You can make sure to try and grab that. And the notes that are really uh, heavily printed, well, they're not, going to, uh, they're not going to climb as fast. Also, while we've got the lights on, a lot of us are interested in, uh, in how our notes grade. And it's interesting how grading is, was tough, gets tougher, gets weaker. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass these two notes around, and I'd like you to... Uh, uh, think about that, and I'll, I'll talk some more while you're looking. But try and grade them in your mind's eye, and then I'll reveal the true grade when, uh, when they get to you. In the meantime, of course, I showed the books, and uh, I, I, I don't like to read to people, so I just put some cues on my, uh, which one? Forward for the, okay. Yeah. Uh, I just put a few cues. I, I hate it when people have have something up on the screen and they read it to me. So, so I'm, I'm not going to read very much to you. My wife, she kind of likes it when I come home from a show and show her a gold coin I bought. She likes those. But when I show her one of my terrific $5 uh, Minneapolis notes, oh, it's the same old picture. You know, that's boring, you know, boring. She, she just isn't impressed. But 
I'm impressed, and I'll tell you how it kind of happened. Uh, I like nationals, and that was my introduction actually to collecting. I started going to, to Memphis about 1986-85 in there somewhere, and uh, I was really interested in, in Michigan Nationals and Upper Peninsula Michigan Nationals, so I was chasing them, and the thrill of finding a note that, that I'd been looking for, it was, just, it was just great. And you know, you could say, uh, well, tw 10 years later you'd say, well I got this note from Joe Jones, and uh, it cost me X, and he had got it from the collection of so and so, and there's just stories to the paper money, and that's what I, I just love the stories. Uh, so, uh, and, and the hunt with these Federal Reserve notes is just as difficult. I, I've got one note here you might want to look at afterwards. It's a, a, a mule. I was looking for it for about 20 years. Uh, turns out it's probably unique. I just found it uh, a, few, uh, a few weeks, uh, a, f a few months ago. I write a column for Banknote Reporter along with the, press re uh, the, the pr prices that I do. And I mentioned in my column I've been chasing these Minneapolis Fives for years and years, and I, I just can't find, I've got four stars I still need, and I've got two, uh, two mules. Then I get an email, and the guy says, uh, well, uh, what new mules do you uh, need? My dad died, and he's got some mules. And I say, well, I need the 35, uh, 34C mule in uh, Minneapolis, and I need the 34B mule. So he emails me back a copy of this note. And I just went crazy, and we, we uh, negotiated back and forth, and I got the note. And then I mentioned in my next column, boy, I was really lucky I managed to pick up a 34C mule, 637 uh, block uh, number on the back. I get an email from Peter Huntoon, and he says, I'm keeping a census of the 637 back plates because they're really scarce, and I'd, I'd, like, a, I'd like you to send me a scan. Well, I looked at uh, the set he sent me of all these different... Uh, notes, there was one 1934C, and it was this note. Oh, wow. uh, and in, in the uh, uh, Scott Lindquist book, it's the only note listed for the, the low known. And in uh, O'Donnell's 1977 book, it's the only note listed for the low known. And it, was, it belonged to a guy named Vicks, and, or Vic. And uh, so I sent it back to, to Peter, I sent an email, I said, well, you list it, uh, you've got the note already because it belongs, it belongs to this guy named Vic and I bought it. There's none listed in the PCGS or PMG, there's none listed anywhere except this note. So I, I believe it's probably unique. Now with the, these old, old notes, there one, might be one in a closet somewhere in Montana, but right now I, uh, I was just thrilled to pick up that particular particular note. How, how are the, how's the grading doing? Okay. Uh, well, then I'll, uh, I'll just go to the next slide and we'll talk about that later. But the hunt. I love the hunt. This is a, a $10 numeric note. And of course when they started printing these, Coolidge was president, things were going along pretty nice, roaring 20s, good economy, so forth and so on. And uh, I was and this is a story note. I was going down to uh, Memphis about 1986 or 87, and there's five of us from Michigan who would go down together, and we'd get two double beds and a roll away, and we'd keep our, our costs down. Well, Larry Flater had a pack of these that he'd been up to the UP prospecting, and he found a pack. A lady had put them away so they'd have cash in case there were problems, and of course, pretty soon there were problems. So he said, well, Pick out the, the one you like and give me 30 bucks for it. Well, I, for, I went through all of them and this, there were a couple that had really good, good centering. And uh, I, crackly, you know, pack fresh as they say in the auction catalogs. And uh, so I, I put it aside. I liked the nine. I thought that was really cool. Of course, I was still in the national bank notes. But uh, I put it away and uh, Years later, I'd gotten into small size, and I picked Minneapolis because it typically is the lowest printing. And of course, the Minneapolis district is the western half of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, the northeastern quadrant of uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, and Wyoming. Huge area, but population-wise, they didn't need very many notes, and the BEP, kind of printed up what was needed. 
So uh, they printed, and of course, they, they started in, in 28 with these uh, small numbers. The early 1914 issues had, uh, they had an I and a nine. They, pr they particularly used both the, the number and the alphabetical letter. And uh, this particular one, I sent it in to get it graded. I thought, it's a nice note. It came back a six, it came back a 67. Ah. It came back a 67. It's the only 67 graded by either grading society. So I really got a great, a great 10 for my set. I was interested in fives, but I, I couldn't turn down that kind of note. Well, later on I was interested in fives. So, and of course, in the 1928 issue, they went uh, all the way up the line to the hundreds with the numeral nine instead of the I for Minneapolis. Uh, and uh, interestingly, when you, uh, so I, I, I enjoyed that, that nine also. We're still, we're still with Coolidge. But now we're into the 34A and uh, the high numbers, the 50 and the 100, they have an I, the fives and the, the uh, well I don't think they made any tens, the fives and the 20s have a nine still. And this was a puzzle, my thought was probably uh, they got word before they started printing the hundreds and fifties that they wanted to change the system back to just the, the, uh, the, the I letter. Well, I was talking to a, an expert Minneapolis collector yesterday and I mentioned that to him. He said, oh, he said, they printed up four plates for the uh, 28A with a nine. And then by the time they were getting ready to print them, uh, the word came that they're going to use the A's, or the, or the, uh, the I's rather. So, they never printed any notes on those four, and, and then the, the, uh, he, he mentioned to me the serial numbers started up a little higher than you'd think because they started printing four pl five plates later. So that was kind of interesting, and, and, and at the same time that the, the hundred was a nine, the five hundred and the thousand were I's. So none of, the, none of the high, high denominations were ever printed that way. And, uh, and of course, as I mentioned, I, I picked Minneapolis because uh, it, it just, uh, they're really scarce. And the nice thing about coming to a show looking for Minneapolis notes is if I don't find one, I get to take my money home with me. <laughs> now here is a, a 28, uh, uh, 28A, uh, and this has got a story too. And it's still the nines, although the higher, higher ones, they, went, they switched over. Uh, I like, to, uh, I like to go to small, sh uh, sh small shows and I especially like to look for coin dealers that have a little pile of money because I know they probably picked them up in a collection they bought and they don't really know anything about uh, paper because they didn't buy the book so they didn't pay much for it and then I'll pick through. Well this, is, this 29A is this, the lowest uh, printing of any of the, uh, the $5 Minneapolis note, regular notes. About 600,000 notes were printed and uh, I'm looking through a, a junk drawer, and I hadn't got a, 29, a 28A, and uh, it's in a, in a junk box, and what do you need for this? <coughs> ah, 15 bucks. Well, at that time, they were going for about seven, $800. I got it slabbed, and it came back a 53. So you can find interesting, uh, interesting things in, in junk boxes. Now, my, my personal ethical standard is if it's a little old lady down the street that doesn't know anything, I've got to tell her what it's worth and tell her I'll give her a, a wholesale value and she gets more than she'd get and I get a better price than I'd get. But the dealers, if, they, if, they're, if they're not willing to buy the books, then I'll use my knowledge as a, as a weapon. Now, I don't have the 28 star that was circulating because uh, I, put a, I put a tab over the grade. And just for the heck of it, how, how, how many would grade that a 15? That 28A Minneapolis note. I seen them yet. Oh, you haven't seen them yet. I, well, I thought you got to the back there. Okay. Well, then I will. We'll, we'll delay that a little bit. Okay. Well, let's turn the lights on and we'll. Okay. Uh, here's a 28B. Now, 28B, of course, they were continuing the I, and they were also continuing when they're, they're printing the regular notes in 28, they started out with one and they just kept going, even though it's an A or a B. Uh, no C or D notes were printed for the fives for Minneapolis. The star notes 
get printed uh, also in the same kind of the same kind of way. They start at one, and then when you go to a different series, they start they start over again. And there's some more complicated stuff I'll share with you a little later. Uh, of course, these are redeemable in gold through the 28 series. Uh, they were redeemable in gold, and uh, they changed that for the 34 series. But all the 28s carry redeemable in gold on demand, and uh, all of a sudden, under President Hoover, the economy went haywire, and you can't blame, you can't really blame a president for uh, the economy, because if it goes, if it goes high, if he takes, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an analogy. I was a police chief in Wausau, Wisconsin for 17 years. One year, we had the lowest crime rate in the country, and I was asked by the newspapers how that was so, and I said, because of the good people of Wausau. Because if I had said, because I'm the best police chief around, when it went up, I would have been the worst police chief in town. So, but the, the, and this also introduces, this is a light green seal. In the B's, C's, and, and D's, they had light and dark serial numbers. And again, uh, Scott Lindquist's book, it tells you the serial number runs. And on, his, uh, on the back of his, his cover, is charts for the, the light green and dark green uh, groups, and the, the 28s are a little bit different, and the 34s are a little different, but you can see, you can match up the colors. And he also will tell you what plate number should be on the back, starting with, or whatever. Going from, and, and the 28B stars, they're I, doing a search, I found one in the heritage files going all the way back through the currency auctions of America. And it sold for, I don't know, three or $4,000 in, uh, in the 80s, I think. It, I've, I've never seen one. So that, that's two of the stars I need. Here is a, another eye, and you can see this is, this is a 34, and this is a light green, and uh, we've, uh, now we enter uh, Julian and, uh, uh, Morgenthau. And they had started out, of course, they were Roosevelt appointees. Uh, you can't get gold anymore, but the $5 bill is a workhorse, so of course they're, they're printing those up. But the, uh, uh, the pair of them, uh, Julian and Morgenthau, they would be together until about, well, until 19, until about two weeks before the atomic bomb was dropped, and, uh, or, or a, a, maybe a month, a month earlier. So they were a long-serving, probably the longest-serving group to serve as secretary and secretary, or as treasurer and secretary of the treasury. Uh, they had started in the uh, in the in the uh, one-dollar silver certificates. They both signed the 28E series, and they signed the 34 series. But then they they radically changed the design on the back of the silver certificate, and uh, so they went to a 35 series. Well. They didn't do anything radical in the, uh, in the, uh, until 34. Uh, the, uh, well, at, at 34, they didn't do anything radical when they went to 34A. So the silver certificates went to, 30, went to 35 and then 35A. These guys stayed pretty much the same through the 34 series with some, some minor, minor changes. But, but Julian and, uh, and uh, what's his face, uh, Morgenthau, they, they signed an awful lot of notes. This is a, uh, uh, another great find for me. Uh, these star notes were just, just hard to find. And uh, the 34 series had three varieties, uh, 34 light, 34 dark, and 34 mule. And uh, with the 1934 issue, we're on the edge of mules, and I'll explain them uh, as we, as we move on. But this, this note I, I got, this is the only one I ever got off eBay. I, just for the heck of it, I, I put in what I was looking for and they actually had a note that I needed and I got it for a reasonable, reasonable price. This is a 40, is the grade for it. And if you're gonna collect FRNs and you wanna get those rare notes, do not be ashamed to grab a, a very fine or even a fine 15. They're just, they're just it's like national bank notes. I remember being told early on, if you run across a note that you really need, buy it because you might never see another one. And with some of these notes, it's just, that's just the way it is. Uh, and the mules are coming, Julian uh, and, uh, oh, uh, small and large. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain that on the next slide.
Now here's a, a 34 with the light green, I believe. Like, oh, wait a second. That's a, that's a mule. And uh, I, guess, I guess I can start telling you about the mules now. The, in in uh, January of 1938, they changed, the, for the 35 silver certificate, they had a half a millimeter uh, plate letter on the back of the note and a half a millimeter plate letter on the front of the note. In 30, for the 35A series, which is par paralleling the 34A series, uh, they did the same thing. They went from small uh, to, to a full millimeter large. Well, when they were making the 35 and the 35A silver certificates, they were printing, they were finishing up the, a, uh, the 35s and, and starting up the A's. The plates got mixed in a little bit. There's about nine known 35 mules, which had the large uh, plate letter from the 35A that, that got mixed in with them, and some 35As that had the, the small uh, back plate because they got mixed in with the, with the earlier plates as well. So then, uh, well, this is a little out of order. This is the green, this is kind of the template for telling the light green, dark green for the 28 group. But the 34 group, it's a little easier to, uh, to tell them. So that's, uh, but, and that, of course, that was still a, uh, that's, this is a Chicago uh, C, 28C. So it still, still was uh, saying it could be redeemed in, in gold. Now we go to, uh, this is the 34B. Okay. I, I, didn't, wait, I didn't include the A because uh, they didn't print any 34As for Minneapolis. Uh, some of the, some, sometimes they just didn't need any, so they didn't print any. But this 34A, uh, or the 34B, well, it's, it's got a, uh, uh, an interesting story, too. It's, it's possibly unique, although I think it's maybe one of two or three. I got this at a heritage auction two years ago at Central States, and they said it was the first one they'd ever handled, and none are listed in PCGS or PMG. And uh, I talked to a, a, a really uh, big-time uh, Minneapolis collector, and he said, I've got a new one, but I don't send in my, I don't get my note slab, so it, it doesn't show up on anything. On this particular issue, they changed, it, they went to B because they took the out of the title. Instead of saying the Federal Bank of, of Minneapolis, they said just Federal Bank of Minneapolis. So that was the, the change on, on that one. But uh, in the, 30, the 34 A's and, uh, <coughs> and the 34's, on the other series group, they had these uh, 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 possibilities where they were printing them at the same time. Some of them got the, uh, the, 34, the, new, the 34A backs. Some of them got the 34B, uh, uh, 34 uh, backs. So the, the mule started. They went through, they were used, of course, they print the backs up first. So they had a, a nice stock of backs, and they used them up till they came to the C series. And however many they printed, <laughs> there were no more mules after that. Throughout the FRNs, though, in this era, there are mules, and it pays to, to look for them, because generally, they're, they're a better note. There more, they're mo are more uh, standard uh, uh, notes. So when I was, uh, for 15 years, every time I saw a 34C, I was turning it over, hoping it would have a, a little tiny serial number, and then, then I found it uh, through, the, through the computer. So this is a 30, this 34B. It's, it's the only one listed, and it, it's a 40. And uh, <coughs> there just don't seem to be enough uncirculated notes to go around. So if you like to get 67 notes, this is, probably is not for you. And here is the uh, 637 small, and, uh, and I've got the note here, I said, too. So uh, this it's just made my day. And it, it happened while I was getting ready for this particular chore, so I was really... Uh, Really happy to be able to report to you that uh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm chugging away the B star or, or the B the the B uh, 34B mule. I don't know. There's they only list one possibility, and uh, and I, I don't I've never met anybody that's got one. So, did you have any uh, Peter? Did you have any Bs in your in your uh, file? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, maybe I'll get lucky and get the my last mule. Here is a. Uh, 34D. 
Uh, the 34D is a, a, a tough series. Uh, this note is a, a, a 58, but the, the gems go for about $500 on the regular note, and the, uh, the stars go for more. I'm, I'm looking for one of, these, one of these stars. And of course, I, uh, I did show you the C, and we'll go back to that for a minute. This is the last, uh, uh, this, this note was printed, oh gosh, I'm trying to think now. Well, let me go back one more, B. Okay, I forgot, I neglected to tell you that Julian stayed on, and, uh, uh, oh, <laughs> Morgenthal. Morgenthal, yeah, thank you. Uh, Morgenthal, of course, Truman is president now, because Roosevelt, Roosevelt died April 12th. Uh, 1945. I remember that date because, uh, another story, uh, I was about five years old and, uh, and my mother was crying and it was two days after my birthday. And I said, what's the matter? She, the president died. And it, that's how much Roosevelt affected the, the, especially the working people. You know, he really, he was just beloved. I grew up in the Detroit suburbs. I didn't hear anybody criticize Roosevelt until I was 22 years old. And uh, I, I had a friend whose dad was a Republican, and he didn't like Roosevelt. It was a shocking experience to me. But uh, at this point, Harry Truman comes in, and uh, Morgenthal says, I'd like, to really, I'd like to go over and work on the Nuremberg stuff. And Truman said no. So he resigned about a month before the A-bomb got dropped. Fred Vincent was a friend of uh, uh, Truman's, so Truman appointed him as the uh, Secretary of the Treasury, but then... The next, uh, the next one you'll see, he, whoops, he's gone now, it's Snyder, because uh, Julian, Julian died, he was hit by a car in 1949. He'd been the, 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 the treasurer from, from the, uh, from the Rose, all through the Roosevelt administration. That's about the only way this can happen, somebody can be that long on. We had four terms of Roosevelt and Truman's term, so very long time and unfortunately he uh, he got hit by a car and uh, he was an elderly man at the time but uh, uh, and this as I said this is a very tough star and uh, Julian was killed so he wasn't on uh, on this particular note and then uh, this now this is the 34s uh, there were minor changes so they had 34A, 34B, 34C, D. Uh, big changes like a larger seal, or a smaller seal rather, a fancy seal, and a smaller uh, green seal, that called for a 1950 uh, uh, calling. Now, the 50 star, I'm still looking for that one. In fact, Mike Crabb always, uh, he got me in the elevator one time and he said, did you hear about the guy that bought a 50 star Minneapolis for 75 bucks? And I, I, I almost passed out and then he kind of let me in that he was just yanking my chain. But uh, these, uh, these 50s were, uh, different design and we're we're going back and forth with uh, and this this would have been well this would have been right after the uh, yeah this would have been early 50s when they came out with this note all the 50 stars the a b c and d are are pretty tough but uh, there the, you can find them you know i'm sure you could find probably two of them at this show if you were if you were looking uh and uh th this also this series Oh. oh, I wanted to show you that I did find a 50 star, but it was a $10 bill, you know, so. But, but it's, it's actually a, a scarce note. And what I've done, the stars I need, I've put in $10 Minneapolis stars in the, in the vacant spot waiting to, for the day I can exchange them. But uh, this, uh, I just like stars, and even though this is a well-circulated note, it's, it's very tough. Here is something that happened in the 50, at, in 50, they had to, and I didn't show you the regular, there was the regular one that they changed. And then they had two other varieties, a narrow, and of course this is just, you know, uh, it, it's, it's kind of boring, but they changed the, uh, uh, the number of ribs going down. And uh, so <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna really, if you really like to home in on that kind of stuff, They've got pictures of, uh, of all these. And there were other, uh, and you see the wide and narrow in the, in the, in the uh, s different sails. 
That wide and narrow, you can find, again, for the small size, you can find that in Scott Linkwith's book. He's got little diagrams that show you what to look for. In this case, these notes are both worth about the same thing, but I, uh, I did manage to get those from uh, Mike Crabb also, who's got a, a really nice inventory of circulated and other Federal Reserve notes. Then, I jump to the modern era. And, uh, oh, I should have mentioned in uh, the 50A series, they had been printing these notes in sheets of 12. And they would, just like the National Bank small size, and they'd, they'd cut them up the middle, and they'd feed them through one at a time, get them numbered. And uh, then in 1950A, when, uh, oh, Ivy Baker Priest came in as the, the treasurer, they, uh, they went to the 32 sheets. So these notes were printed with 32 uh, notes to the sheet, and the numbering gets a little different then. Sometimes it just, uh, I just can't figure it out. But I, for instance, uh, and I didn't show it because I, I just bought it before, uh, about the time I, I was packing up, I bought an 88 star uh, $5 Minneapolis, which is kind of the key to this group, real tough star. They printed 128,000, but uh, mine starts with a serial number of 5 million. How, how can that be? Well, Scott Lindquist told me when I, I gave him that question, well, they print them backwards. They figure out how many they need and they start at like 6,400,000 and they print them backwards. So your note is actually in that, uh, in that range, but, uh, but because they didn't print any more of, of the lower blocks. So in, in the star notes in this case, they, uh, they're, uh, it's hard to, it's, you look at the book and he tells you how many they made, but it doesn't match up with the serial numbers. Uh, going back to, uh, let's see, and of course the, 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 the first group was, uh, was eight, and then this, this is where we went, we went to 18 with the 50, and now we're at 32 with the, uh, and so when they're printing the stars, they try to get a, a bulk group that is divisible by 32, so they come out even when they, when they get done printing them. Uh, they didn't print any 63s for uh, uh, the Minneapolis issue, and uh, uh, throughout the, uh, you'll see, especially the smaller district, the smaller population groups in the fives, tens, twenties, whatever, you'll see that uh, they, they, didn't, uh, they didn't print as many, or they didn't print any at all sometimes. They're, they didn't do a 63 there. Uh, if you, if you want to pick a, a, a district, uh, of course, it's fun to do the district you live in, and of course, I, I, can see, I lived in Wisconsin for 30 years, I liked the Upper Peninsula, so Minnesota was, and it was the, the scarcest one, but Kansas City, uh, San Francisco, uh, Atlanta, Richmond, those are all pretty tough. And, and in fact, all of these, uh, right, right from uh, uh, Boston to, to San Francisco, all of these groups have some, some blockers, some notes that are really tough and you're going to look and look and look and uh, try and find one. And it isn't like uh, you're, you're looking for a, uh, a tough coin and 14 dealers in the room have got it. But, uh, uh, I, and I, I, of course, I go through uh, and my standard, you got any $5 Minneapolis small size? No, or yes, and, but, but then they're the, they're the newer ones. But uh, uh, they're, they're, uh, I like the new ones too. Here's a uh, tougher modern note. All the denominations of the 69B seem to be uh, pretty, uh, pretty popular. It was a small printing. Uh, not everybody got 69Bs, not all, all 12 districts got them. And I've, I've noticed as I, as I look over the auction results, uh, 69B, especially 50s and 100s, they seem to bring a nice premium over, over the other, uh, other small size notes of this, of this particular era. So it's uh, all, all denominations, it's, it's pretty tough. Here's a uh, 124,000 printed on the 77A. So that should be a really pricey note. Uh, but uh, through the luck of the game, I guess, these somehow, uh, maybe somebody saved a pack. And then when people realized how scarce they were, a guy had 100 of them that he could sell. And they just, I think I paid $175 for, for this note. The other two are, are 2,000 uh, bucks uh, for, the, for the other two keys to this particular series. So. I was, I was really grateful that that one was uh, in my wheelhouse for affordability. Here's, and of course, 81, 
was that 81? No, that was 69B. This is an 81, this is my, kind of my favorite series because when I can't find a, a Minneapolis and know what I need, I say, do you have any Minneapolis errors? And there aren't even very many Minneapolis errors. So this one is a obstructed, obstruction. There was a piece of paper on laying, when they, when they were printing the second, uh, uh, the first printing rather, uh, when they were printing, printing that, there was a piece of paper laying there and it probably flew off. So these are nice, <laughs> but about one in a hundred, the obstruction stays attached. And you've probably seen the illustration of the, the Band-Aid on a note. When they've got the attached uh, thing, that, that really, uh, really makes a big difference uh, in price-wise. But this one, I, I think I got it for 150 bucks from uh, my crab, one of my, one of my favorite dealers. Uh, he's a grouchy guy, but he's, he's a good guy. Uh, then, you see this serial number here, IB. This is the only series in the whole Minneapolis uh, group that has a B. They're all IBs. They never got so many notes that they had to go to IB. And this is kind of an enigma too, and I, nobody can answer this one. They printed uh, 21 million IAs. And then instead of going on to print 9 million more, they printed 9 million IBs. I don't know why, but uh, must have been must have been something, maybe a, I, I don't know. I, if, if any of you can ever find out the address, my email's in my, on my column, please tell me why they would do something like that. And uh, here's the uh, 81 star. This is, uh, another, this is one of the two that's really tough. This is a 55, and uh, talking to different dealers from the Minnesota area, they think there's only four or five of these around. And there might be, might be a pack in somebody's closet, but right now, it's a really tough note to find. Uh, again, when I'm not, uh, when I'm not, when I can't find a, uh, a, a note I need, I, uh, I, I was at a Michigan State show. See this, this uh, like nationals, you remember where you were and all kinds of stuff. I was at a Michigan State show. I was at the very last, I'd gone through every single one of the 130 or so tables. Any Minneapolis notes? No, no. And I get to the last one, and uh, the guy says, uh, no, I don't have any. I said, well, I see an IA there. That's many. He said, oh, well, that's an error. I said, oh, well, let me see it then. So, uh, so for 81, I've got an 81A, a IA, I've got an 81IB, an error, and a star. So th this is my favorite, uh, although it, it messes up my Linder album because I can't, I, I've got to put two of them together on one of the three pages, three uh, holders. Here is the uh, 93. Where did they go? They didn't go to Ecuador. Uh, this is like a $500, this is a 58. A new one's about a five or $600 note. There's maybe a dozen known. Uh, nobody knows where they went. Now, currently, Ecuador is using our currency for their, uh, for their economy. Pretty smart guys, really, because the US dollar is not gonna be bouncing around quite like the, uh, the, the South American currency does. But nobody, no, it, it's just, uh, I got this, Scott Lindquist had a small run of them he picked up somewhere, and uh, I managed to, to get one then for my set. But uh, it's just, where did they go? I don't know, that's another unanswered question. If you find out, email me. And this is the end of the era, no stars. And in fact, for about 10 of the issues, in the modern group, only the 28A had no stars. Although uh, uh, one of my dealer friends bought a pack of 28As and it had a 28 star in it. So I I'm assuming they printed too many 28 stars and they had a few left over they used in the, the, 20, uh, in the, the 28As. Uh, this particular one, let's see, it, it's, there's not a star. And, and they haven't, they, they didn't make any stars from 88A, for, they did the 88A star, and then they didn't do any, and in, in the new groups, and I, I only, he, he only covered us up to 06, and I'm, I'm not collecting the big heads, they, they didn't print any stars at all, which means they've got to be using, they have to be using star notes from other, other groups. And I could, there's about 10 or 12 uh, in, Minneapolis uh, uh, runs that they didn't print any stars. And, uh, uh, and I, I, I remember hearing about a guy that got a, a pack and there was a, a different district star in the pack. So uh, 
that, that nobody, nobody seemed, they, they, I kind of heard the rumor, so that's, that's what I'm assuming is that they're, they're using stars from, from other packs. And uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Any questions?